Now, this has been called a hidden crime, with very few people reporting abuse by their own child or their own grandchild. And there's no real specific system out there for reporting parental abuse, despite it now being a growing concern. And it is a growing concern. It's now thought there are as many as 300 cases here in the Midlands alone. So what, what can we do in the community? Can we do more? Can faith leaders help here? Is it something that, that community leaders and faith leaders need to, to step forward and offer that support that just isn't there at the moment? I just want to get a word with um, Sheikh Mohammed Aslam, Imam Khatib of one of the largest mosques in Birmingham, Lazelle Central Mosque, also founded City of Knowledge Academy. Um, good morning. Good morning to you. Hello then, good morning. Good morning, thank you for talking to us this morning. I mean, you were listening there, it, it is a very worrying situation. Have you, have you ever heard of cases like this, of actual parents being attacked by, by their own children? Uh, it, and the, these are very unfortunate cases that we've just heard um, on the radio. Um, I have come across um, a, few num uh, a few of these cases, uh, but nothing to the extent of what we just heard uh, on the radio. Um, I've come across parents who've come to me and complained about their particular children um, being abusive towards them, but it's maybe been verbal abuse uh, of um, using bad language and becoming extremely rageous and angry towards them. Um, we, we in the Muslim community, we have a, a very high level of reverence and respect uh, mm -hmm. that's instilled into children uh, towards their parents. So hence, uh, cases like this are extremely, extremely rare, but nevertheless, um, they do exist. Mm. They're not extinct from the community. And I believe that one of the things that uh, can be done is parents themselves need to really take uh, charge of the upbringing of their children. As the world is progressing um, very quickly and extremely fast, sometimes parents can't actually keep up with their own children. And oftentimes I've heard from parents say that my child is very quick in IT and he knows how to use the mobile or she knows how to use the computer. Mm -hmm. and they're extremely quick with YouTube and, uh, and Facebook and all of these uh, social media websites. And it seems like the parents are very far behind in many yeah. cases uh, um, in comparison to their children. And they actually feel that their child is extremely ahead of them. So one of the problems that's occurred is is this generation gap between parents and children within the home. Mohammed, I mean, like you say, absolutely, we know that is the case. I mean, you know, children as young as, you know, if, if even preschool uh, pretty much know what, what they're doing around tablets and, you know, yep. iPhones yep. and all of that. Yep. But yep. why, if you come across the reasons why such rage that can lead to physical attacks, physical abuse, what, what are the reasons, what, what are the triggers that you're coming across? Um, the, the, the children are, are, are lashing out like this at their own parents. I think uh, some of the reasons behind this is uh, when they, see, for example, when they see other children uh, being treated in, uh, being being treated with certain treats uh, by their parents at home, uh, and other children having certain luxuries that a child doesn't have, so that child will come home and ask for that. And if a parent's not able to provide that then not being able to fulfill uh, that child's desire would bring about this type of behavior. And parents not having that relationship and not having that communication uh, between with their children and not being uh, interactive with their children uh, such that the child feels, okay, this is my parent, I need to respect them, whatever it is they goes uh, my friends on uh, they're, they're my friends at school and they're my, they're my colleagues but what my p parents say comes before uh, what, what my uh, friends and you see it's it's uh, uh, all of this external impact that the children are having through social media through television uh, to, to through cartoons that they watch and I mean many of the cartoons that young children watch uh, there's 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 a message of rebellion against parents and th that the opinion of a child is uh, overriding that mm. of a parent and children really can 
you know, have their own way about things. Yes, and, and the right. strength, the strength is there, you know, when you see, you see, you know, what young people, even the ones we were talking to in Sutton Coalfield, it, when they get that frustration, the, 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 the strength that they can overpower their, their parents is very profound. And the problem is, I know, I know you were saying, you know, parents need to address this, they need to get the respect, yeah. the reverence back in the home, quite yeah. right, but what, if you, you know, got to speak to a child, a grandchild who has struck their own parents, their own grandparents, yeah. and the, the parents just feel Feel weak. They feel yeah. they feel they can't do anything. What would you What would you say to them to, to just yeah. try and make a difference? Uh, well, I've uh, had actual cases where parents have come to me and said, "Can you please speak to my child in confidence without letting them know that I spoke to them and just speak to them about how they should be behaving at home and and the type of respect that they should be given their parents." And we, I've, I've spoken, many of my uh, colleagues have also spoke to these particular children uh, individually and as a class base. And mainly as a class base, we've kind of tried to, uh, tried to instill uh, particular morals and manners and uh, uh, behaviors that sh- sh- should be um, shown towards people at home, mm. towards siblings, towards parents. And what's been gra- the feedback? Has it, has it worked when and, we go back to the home? And many a time, and in most of our cases, it's it's been uh, positive, mm. where parents have come back and said, uh, thank you very much for speaking to my child. Things have changed. Yeah. Their behaviors become better. He or she uh, is more respecting Keeping towards the conversation us. Going. So yeah. it, it is important that uh, religious leaders and community leaders, and especially school teachers, mm. take a, 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 a very important role in this. Because oftentimes I felt that the parents have come to me as a teacher and said, he listened to you. She'll be more uh, uh, adhering to what you say and what you say will... And they've told me at times that uh, they've actually kind of said to their children, OK, we need to speak to your teachers. Mm. And the child's kind of got frightened and yeah. said, oh, OK, uh, now... Because children naturally look up to their teachers children naturally have an awe and uh, a respect and that's their absolutely teachers. right yeah and that's hopefully something that they can then take yeah. and help yeah. parents shake shake mohammed aslam it's been lovely to talk to you this morning thank you for your time um, um you for something that i think we will talk about um again in the future now this this issue is hidden crime of uh, of children uh, grandchildren actually lashing out and uh, and abusing their own their own parents their own grandparents was highlighted by us being out in Sutton Coalfield for your WM, does this? I don't know whether this hits home with you. Whether, regardless of where you are in the West Midlands, is this something that resonates with you in your own family? Have you had to?